Good morning. You get me sooner than later today because it's Youth Sunday. Last week being Easter Sunday was actually the fifth Sunday, but David being gone, we said, hey, let's just do Youth Sunday the first week in March. So um, you get a treat today. We're going to sing hymns. I love hymns, and I said, you know what? It's Youth Sunday. We're going to do hymns today. So if you stand with us, we'd love to sing with you. Christ the Lord. So, uh, coming events. Well, I'm just going to have Betsy come up, and she can share a little bit about the care team this morning. So, you've seen on the screen and in your bulletin for several weeks that we are revamping the care team to do it more um, what fits our church and to fit our communities better. And so... um, if you'll look at your bulletin, there's a really good description. It is this Sunday and next Sunday from 6 to 7.30. It, um, if at all possible, we'd really like you to come to both and not just because it's not a repeat of the first train. The 7th and the 14th. 14th and 21st because the 7th is now, right? Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I have been traveling, and so with the wind and everything, I'm still a little, I have a little jet lag. Okay, so the topics that we're going to cover are active listening, using questions effectively, the mud pit, which is one of my favorite topics, and grace-based acceptance. But what are you signing up for? What, like, why should you do this? Um, Because I know you've all heard about the Stevens ministry. And what you're signing up for is two classes. That's it. We're not asking for a lifelong commitment. Um, You're going to get information and training, new skills to help in your life. You don't have to do anything beyond 
interacting with the people you see every day. Um, and you're going to get make new friendships or, or build on existing ones. What you are not signing up for is to be part of the visitation team. So I don't want anybody to think, I don't want to do this because I don't want to have pastor calling me and saying, hey, can you do this or that or the other? If you would like to do that, we would love to have you do that. But that's not what you're signing up for for these two classes. It's strictly to, so you are more comfortable in sharing your faith and being the hands and feet of Christ. That's it. And we really hope that you'll sign up. I'll be in the back um, by the information center after church if you have any questions. Anything else? Do you, okay. Thanks. Perfect. Thank you. Um, with that, um, there's an answer in your bulletin about the Valley Christian School Summer Child Care. Um, starts May 21st and goes through August 16th, 7 a.m. to 5.30. Um, you can register by calling the school or uh, emailing. There's email on there as well. Um, or I guess you could probably stop in at their address at 2441 East E Street and talk to them in person as well. And with that, we have a group from VCS that has some things they would like to share or from Valley Christian School. So if ladies, if you'll come and bring the students you have, that would be awesome. Good morning. I'm Brenda Dennis, and I am the kindergarten teacher at Valley Christian School. Um, I am finishing my 31st year of teaching. I spent most of my career as a public um, education teacher, um, which is very valuable, and I appreciate Christians being in the public school. I just want to make that clear because sometimes I, I have heard that people think we're better. We think we're better because we're a Christian school, and I want to make it very clear, that is not the case at all. There's a place for Christians in public education, so I just, I just want to make sure that it, that does not come across in any way. Um, but I have had the privilege in the last 12 years to be at the Christian school, and the, one of the things that I feel so blessed to do is I don't just get to have my faith and try to live it out, but I get to share it and I get to help my kids grow and, and watch them grow. We've gone up to middle school, and, and I've had most of the kids in the middle school, and I'm getting to see what, what God is doing in them. And so it has been such a privilege of making being a part of their faith. And so um, I just we, we just want to share with you um, what Christian, Valley Christian is and, and what we do. Good morning. I'm Liz Vandal. Um, I'm actually a former student of the Valley Christian School back in the... Can you hear me now? Okay. I don't like microphones. Um, so I was a former student at Valley Christian School back in the uh, early 80s. Uh, Miss Ruthie Young was actually one of my teachers. Um, I recently come back to Torrington. Um, I am not a teacher. I teach there part-time. Um, my background is engineering. Um, so I am so out of my comfort zone, I can't even begin to describe it to you all. Um, I have been really blessed to be a part of this school, um, both as a student and now as a part-time uh, science teacher. To see these kids and, and what they're capable of doing and the challenges that we put in front of them and the things that they've, they've learned from those challenges, it's been just a, a really neat thing to watch. Um, some of the things that we're doing in the school right now, uh, with my science background, I've been doing some of the science teaching. But we also have like some extracurricular activities, uh, Lego League, which is really an awesome uh, program for these kids. They get their ch an opportunity to not only learn about programming, um, they get to come up with ideas of how to solve some of the world's problems and, and come up with ways to, to demonstrate how they would go about doing it along with the fun activity of building Legos, and then they go to a competition uh, in, in Casper every year and show their ideas, and they compete with their robot. And so it's a whole fun, interesting program. Um, other things that we've done with the kids, um, we uh, just recently we had a stargazing party um, out at my folks' place. The clouds weren't real uh, 
well, great that night. We couldn't stargaze like we wanted to, but the kids ran and played and had a great time. I finally, about 10 o'clock, they finally ran out of energy. Um, and so we called parents and said, you might want to come get them before they fall asleep. Um, but we just try to keep these kids engaged in a lot of different things. You know, God is our first and, and primary focus for these kids. But this curriculum that we're using also talks about how, you know, science is related to to things that God has created and how God has created this perfect world, has created a world of order and not a world of chaos. And there's many science philosophies out there that are based on this world coming from chaos to order. And that is a complete, uh, utter lie because if you look at the laws of physics, whether you believe in them or not, the laws of physics say we can't go from chaos to order. Order goes to chaos. And this is what these kids are learning along with so many other things. Hello, my name is Henry, and what I like about Valley Christian School is that all the teachers are really nice, and they teach the Bible curriculum that God is real and that we can stand strong in that faith as long as we live. Hi, I'm Ben McIntyre, and the one thing that I like about uh, Valley Christian is just all the teachers and how they can make your day go from not so good to the best day ever. I had to write mine down. My name is Michelle Jerome, and um, my husband Jeff and I and our two big German Shepherd dogs moved from uh, moved to Lingle from Eagle River, Alaska to be closer to family after moving around with the Coast Guard for 33 years. Um, the first time I subbed at Valley Christian, I was told to be there at 7.15. I thought, 7.15, are you kidding me? <laughs> but I quickly realized that it was a time for collaborating, for prayer requests, a devotion from our principal, and the school being bathed in prayer. The first day I subbed, um, I subbed as support staff in Joanne Hall's uh, second and third grade classroom. And it was Wednesday, and so it was Chapel Wednesday. So I got to go to chapel, and I thought, this is awesome. And the next day, I subbed in her classroom as well as support staff, and I got to listen to Mrs. Hall teach Bible. And it was really cool because she was really more like leading it because the kids were just on fire and telling her the answers and just this conversation about Jesus in the school. I was like, this is, this is completely amazing. Um, so after those first couple days, I did not turn my sub papers in anywhere else. I knew that, that I really wanted to be part of Valley Christian School. Um, also, the first time I subbed in middle school, I thought, oh, my goodness, Lord, please help me, because I'm, I'm used to teaching the littles. And here are these middle school kids, and they're scary. And two girls walked in, and one of them said, hi, I'm Hadley. And the other one said, hi, I'm Adley. And who are you? And they were just so, so positive. I thought, okay, Lord, thank you. I can do this. Um, <laughs> um, but I had every intention to retire from teaching after we moved from Alaska. But um, the, just even the minute I walked in, I just felt um, like God was calling me to be there. So from a perspective of a New Valley Christian School teacher, I clearly see the staff and these amazing children shine brightly for Jesus. And I get to teach a curriculum that, is, uh, that has a firm biblical foundation, and I get to encourage them in their walk, but really at the end of the day, I walk away encouraged myself and, and see how God has used them to even to grow me. Um, so that being said, uh, we'd like to thank our church um, and each one of you for supporting Valley Christian, whether it's by sending your kids, your grandkids, for financially supporting us, for uh, praying for us. Um, that's the most important. And if you would like to get a taste and see how awesome these, ki these kids are, on Thursday night, this Thursday, 6.30 at Sunrise Church, they're going to have their spring concert. And so you are formally invited to their spring concert to see, um, to see what one of the things that they get to do. Um, and it's your turn. My name is Cynthia McIntyre. I am the fourth and fifth grade 
teacher, so I have a combo class. And one of the things from coming from the public school setting for 20 years and then being in Christian education for the last seven is being able to walk alongside those kids, to be able to connect everything back to God through all the subjects, and to be able to witness them making commitments. Um, I just had two students ha be uh, baptized, and so, <laughs> sorry, that's just so awesome. <laughs> You know, to see the kids say, okay, here I am, and this is my commitment, and I'm standing for Jesus. Um, and that's the same thing with youth group, right? Yep. <laughs> um, I just wanted to make you aware that uh, we have open enrollment, so it's an opportunity, and that there are scholarships available. Uh, again, contact us. And thank you also for uh, supporting us during taco dinner and all of those kind of things for either donating or showing up and eating tacos or bidding on the auction stuff. We just really appreciate it. Thank you. I, I can say it's a lot of fun, too. I don't know how many weeks it is between the pastors going, but we have, I think, three times that we go, that Nellie and I go and, and share in chapel on Wednesdays. And I think, think that was Michelle's first day. I think I think was was the, I think that was our first chapel this year. So um, there's several pastors from throughout the county that go and and do chapel for the kids. And I think there's eight or ten pastors. I'm not sure. I haven't counted it up, but um, there's quite a few. So um, let's see here. So Forge for tonight is postponed or canceled for tonight. Um, I was talking with Craig earlier, and he s suggested that might be a good idea because this storm has already been so weird that who knows, we can end up with, storm, with a lot of snow tonight. So um, we, are, we are canceling that for this month. We will, we will pick back up in May. Um, and then just prepare yourselves for the new sermon series. Joseph, um, let's hear a couple of things coming up this week that are new on the back of the bulletin. Um, one of those is the quarterly business meetings at 7 o'clock on Tuesday. Um, so make yourselves aware of that if, if you are on a board or committee and forgot this this month is our quarterly business or our quarterly board meetings. So, um, and then um, also this Saturday, right here at North Hills, down in the fellowship hall, is the men's community breakfast at seven thirty. Um, so put that on your calendar. That is something different. And then again, um, VBS is June tenth through the fourteenth. Michael is still looking for one or I don't know one or two people to help with. Um, a registration for that. You can tear your tear off off of your bulletin and mark that and put it in the uh, offering plate with your name on it. Also, prayer requests or any questions you might have, or just look over that. Fill out your name, tear it off, mark something, don't mark anything, share a prayer requests. It could be anonymous. Uh, we pray for those on Tuesday mornings. So, um, yeah, so with that, um, we need to be praying for the Berkeleys this morning. Joyce is in the hospital with an infection in her arm, um, so if we can just keep her in our prayers. Um, I know there's some others that have some injuries we need to pray for, too, and, and um, within our church body, and of course, continue to pray for those that have lost loved ones as they continue to, to work through their grief. Um, pray for David and Sarah as they fly back. Pastor Michael and Joanne are driving. I think they left yesterday. I don't know. I don't know sure when they left, but I know they're driving there and driving back from Texas to see the, to see the, well, hopefully see the eclipse. Doesn't sound like it's going to be great weather, so none of us may see it, I don't know. Um, so would you join me in prayer this morning as we pray for these things? Father God, uh, thank you so much for the moisture. Um, I guess in some ways, thanks, we didn't get the snow, but we got the rain. Um, we, we certainly need the moisture. Uh, I just pray, Lord, for those that are without power, um, that... It could be restored to them, but I also pray for safety for the crews and, and for just um, strength to be patient for those that are without the power as, as crews try to restore that as, as they um, do the work that they need to. Just, just pray, Lord, that you could help the winds die down some today so that maybe some of that work can get done. And um, just pray for all those driving, whether it's to see this eclipse from all over the country and probably the world. I pray for safety for all of them. Um, Lord, we lift up Joyce to you um, as she is in the hospital with this infection. Um, I just pray that you would 
uh, lift her up, heal her body. Uh, pray for Dan as he's alongside of her, um, watching her go through this, that you would just help him as he deals with, with how she's, uh, with her being in the hospital. And Lord, we continue to pray for those that have grief um, as they've lost loved ones. Um, God, I pray that, that again, that they will just know that you are near. Uh, whatever turmoil we are going through, whatever hard things we're, we're dealing with and facing, I just pray that we can, that we can just grasp how good you are. Um, and we just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Sent his son, they called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He bled and died to buy my pardon.
amen to that, huh? thank you so much that Jesus rose from the grave. Yeah, we're a week past Easter. We're a week past that celebration. But I can't wait to hear Hayden preach about living in the beautiful empty. God, I pray that you'd be with him right now as he comes and speaks to us. Uh, May you just fill him with your spirit as he shares. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. may be seated. Deep in the heart, there's a place we call empty. It's hidden underneath the distractions we pile on it and the love for things that will never love us back. But beneath all those things is the empty. As hard as we try, we can never fill that space. Then one day, Jesus walked right up to our empty, knocked on the door of our despair, dared to stare into the dark hole that we didn't have the courage to look at ourselves. He didn't flinch. He stepped into it, then filled it with his resurrection life. Jesus showed us that the empty, filled by his love and his life, becomes beautiful. So now he calls us to empty ourselves over and over, to be filled with a love that overflows, to fill our brothers and sisters, to fill dark places with bright hope, to fill death with life, to fill grief with joy, to fill fear with peace, to replace an empty tomb with the hope of life in the name of Jesus. It's the beautiful empty. I get the great honor of closing out this series, The Beautiful Empty, 
and then next week, Pastor David will uh, start the next series or whatever. So, um, Christmas and Easter are two of the biggest holidays celebrated. What makes them What makes them special or so popular? I absolutely love Christmas, and it's my favorite holiday. It's special to me because my mom makes a lot of yummy treats. We bake cookies and decorate them. I like to light up our yard like the 4th of July with lights and more lights. You can't have too many lights. And then yet again, I don't pay the electric bill one bit <laughs> with a whole bunch of blow-ups and I don't really know, but... Um, when I was younger, I would set out treats and eggnog for Santa. One year, my brother even tried to catch him with a trap. All my brother ended up catching that year was the presents that Santa left us that year. I love all the Christmas music um, and going to the candlelight Christmas Eve service. I love celebrating the birth of Jesus and wonder what it was like for him growing up as a kid. I enjoy the presents I open Christmas morning in front of my fireplace. I even, but even though I love everything about Christmas, I quickly grow tired of gifts or even forget they even exist. Easter is another holiday I like. Dying eggs, um, candy in my Easter basket, baby calves, the sunrise service on Easter morning out there at Pastor Dick's up there on the hill. All these things I love about Easter. But just like those hidden eggs that someone forgot where they hid them and are probably found months later, we tend to forget that empty tomb and how Jesus died for us so we did not have to go through the things that Jesus had to go through. So what happens after Easter when that last hymn is sung and that last bite of ham is eaten? Do you just go about your business until you see Walmart putting out their Christmas stuff again in August? Why do they do that? I don't get it. Why? Why? Um, why do we so quickly forget what Jesus did for us, and how can we live in the beautiful empty? The past few weeks, I've been studying kind of what happens after Easter. I found this story on what happens after Easter from a guy named James Early, and these are some of, the, some of his remarks. What happens after Easter? When I was a student in France, people celebrated the day after Easter called. Now, this is a word in French, so I'm going to attempt to say it. It's called Lundi de Pox, or Easter Monday. It's still a public holiday in France and many other countries. But what about the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, after Easter, and all the other days that follow? How long do we remember and hold on to the joy we felt on Easter morning? How long do we focus on and live the spirit of Jesus' resurrection in our day-to-day -day lives? Unfortunately, a week or two after Easter has come and gone, sometimes the very next day, we're busy with all sorts of things that occupy our time, our actions, and the thoughts in our heart. We get occupied with family activities, projects at work, planting the garden, planning a vacation. I mean, the list goes on and on, on and on and on, in and of themselves. These activities are probably good and needed, but honestly, how much do we continue to remember and be inspired by the resurrection two, three, or even six months after Easter? Easter is not a one-time event. All too often, we think of events in a historical context. We place them on a timeline of other events to get a perspective of how a particular story unfolds. And this has its place for us to understand what happened with Jesus in the history of the early Christian church. But from a more spiritual perspective, Jesus' resurrection is not a one-time event that happened centuries ago. It is continuous and ongoing manifestation of the power of life over death, good over evil, and love over hate. In that sense, there's no after the resurrection because it's always taking place. So maybe we need to change the question from what do we do after the resurrection to how can we part participate yeah, participate in the ongoing resurrection of Christ in our life and in the world. <laughs> to participate, we take part in an action or attempt to do something. The first way is salvation. It's very important that we first recognize the sacrifice Jesus made for us. He truly became nothing so that we could be something. 
John chapter 3, 16 says, For we so love the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. What does salvation mean? Salvation means death to and freedom from sin. Unless we grab on to the fact that Jesus, our Lord, sacrificed himself for our salvation, then celebrating his resurrection just becomes folk. Yeah, just becomes focused on bunnies and plastic eggs. Just another reason to fill our own wishes with things of this world. Number two, recognizing he conquered death. Jesus was crucified on Friday and placed in a tomb. Saturday was observed as the Sabbath day and people rested. On Resurrection Sunday, Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James, went to the tomb to anoint the body of Jesus with spices. Instead of a decaying body, they found an empty tomb. Two bright, shining men, probably angels, asked what what they were doing. Luke chapter 24, 1 through 6 says, On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wandering... Wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. So number three, Pastor Brandon. I left this up to him, and he forgot to put it in there. So number three is missing in your bulletin, but... Um, it's believing in the resurrection. Um, Acts chapter 1, 3 says, After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. We remember Jesus' sacrifice on the cross when we take communion. The bread and the cup are reminders and should not be just another ritual. Rather, a time we should reflect on our actions. Examine our heart and ask for forgiveness. We can live in the beautiful empty by living as adopted children of God. When we receive Christ by faith, we become a part of his family. John 1.12 says, Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. We don't deserve to be a part of God's family. But because of his grace and mercy, we are blessed with many things. Someday, I might inherit, inherit some of my parents' possessions. Maybe these are things that, that they worked hard for. Or maybe it's something they had been, that had been passed down to them through the generations. This is my earthly inheritance. And as special as this inheritance may be, we have a far better inheritance. And that is the kingdom of God. In getting to live with him forever, he has given us the gift of peace in knowing that because he died on the cross for our sins, we have been forgiven. Number two, we can live in the beautiful empty by being baptized into Christ's death. Baptism represents the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Our old sins and life are buried, and then we rise to a new life in Christ. Romans 6, 3 through 7 says, For don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may have a a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that Our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with. That we should no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. We can live in the beautiful empty with the Holy Spirit's help. The Holy Spirit is our helper and leads us in the way we should go. When we are saved, the Holy Spirit fills us and stays with us. John chapter 14, 16 through 17 says, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, 
even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. We can live in the beautiful empty by doing good works. First, it's important to know that we cannot be saved by our works. But when we are saved, we will do good works. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 says, We have been created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Good works are things like helping people, being kind and loving, giving our tithes and talents, going to church, volunteering at church, praying. Yes, these are surface acts, all great. But we, aren't also, but we are also to be obedient and have a changed heart and a life of faith. A lot of people say that they are Christians, but their words, actions, and how they live their life in general show otherwise. If you claim to be a follower of Christ, act like it. How do we live in the beautiful empty? Today is a week past the day we celebrate Resurrection Sunday. But are you still celebrating a risen king? Don't let Easter be a once a year celebration. Don't let your empty space be filled with distractions. Constantly recognize that work, school, vacations, and even family are all important. But nothing should take the place of Jesus. Allow Jesus to fill your beautiful empty. God created each of us as empty buckets. That empty space is perfectly filled by Jesus. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for dying on the cross for us. Thank you for dying for us so that we don't have to do the things, that we don't have to go through the things that you had to go through, Lord. You made it possible that we could go into heaven with you without being beaten and whipped like you were, Lord. I just want to thank you for that, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. See, what Hay didn't know is I left that out on purpose so we could include it with communion. No, not really. I, I read through his script and was putting them in and, and uh, read through it, and I thought I had included it, and I didn't. So, you know, hey. <laughs> um, but I want to come back to that point, believing in the resurrection. I mean, how many of us continue to think about the resurrection every single day of our lives? Because it is carried forward in our lives, right? Um, his death, we, 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 we look to his death and, and even the shed blood and, and his body as we do the communion, as we take the bread and we, we eat and we drink the cup. And um, So maybe today we also remember the resurrection of Jesus Christ when we, when we do this in remembrance of him as he tells us to do it in Luke uh, 24. Um, so I'm going to have... The guys come up. We got five of our youth that are going to um, hand out our communion today. And as they're doing that, um, I'm going to read from Luke, excuse me, Luke 24, Luke 22. Luke 22, 14 and 15 says, When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. And then in verse 19, it says, he took the bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it, gave it to them, saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Uh, so as we do this this morning, um, we're going to hand it out. I want you guys, to, if you'll just hold on to it for a minute, think about what we're doing this morning. Um, the fact that this is in remembrance of Jesus and his death, his shed blood and broken body, but also the eternal life that it brings. And then we will partake together when we are back together and done handing stuff out.
You keep going. You're fine. Jesus paid it all. All to him we owe. It's the ransom for our life. He bought us back from the sin that took us away from fellowship with God. So he broke the bread. He poured the cup. He said, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. They took, they ate, they dipped in the cup. And they did it in remembrance of him. Will you do that with us today? Let's do it in remembrance of him. Ladies, you can go ahead and come back up, Rick. Carrie, Chad, I have a question for you. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Well, let's sing about it. paid it all so that me, we might live. Hayden talked about that. What salvation is, death to sin, freedom from sin. That's what we have in Jesus Christ. It doesn't take away the pain. It doesn't take away the sorrow. I want to read one verse here. Matthew chapter 16, verse 21 through 23 says, From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, 
and that he must be killed, and on the third day he raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but most merely human concerns. Jesus, the Satan is trying to, we need to run away from Satan. Don't yeah. run towards Satan. Run away from Satan, right? right? Satan is trying to do bad things. We need to run away. How many here knows who Carmen is, the singer? And, uh, Satan, bite the dust. That was one of his songs. One of my favorites. So, run away from Satan. Live in the freedom you have. Make sure you're washed in the blood. See you all next week for Joseph. Love you all. Good job. Thank you. Beautiful. Good job, ladies.